Greetings, this is Maxo Dizzily here, and today I am here with another Python tutorial to help you get an A in your coursework or exam. And today we're here with how to validate an email using a rejects pattern. So, before we begin, I just want to say this tutorial will not cover how to get user input, but only covers how we're going to validate that user input. So let's get right into it. So we have got a variable called user input and it's equal to m at g.com. Then we've got print validate email user input. We're calling the print function to print whatever validate email returns. And we'll pass in user input, which is the email we wish to validate. So by valid email, I'm meaning something along the lines of some characters, an at, then a domain. There are many different ways we can validate an email address, and honestly, there's no simple rejects to fit every single email you might want to validate. I'm just get, I'm, we're just going to be using a basic one, which basically means the user doesn't accidentally input something that isn't their email address in an email address field. The rejects will be in the description below. But let's get into defining this function now. Firstly, at the very top of your code, you need to do import re. We're going to be importing for rejects library. After that, we're going to do def valid email and input, then a colon. We are defining our function, it's called valid email. And we're going to have a parameter called input, which is going to be the user input or the email address we wish to validate. Then we are going to do return bool bracket re.match a rejects pattern, comma, input, two brackets. So what's going on here? Well, basically, we are going to return the result of our rejects match. So re.match basically is take a rejects pattern and see if the string matches the rules defined by the rejects pattern. I won't go into how a rejects pattern works, but it contains a bunch of rules that a string needs to match. If it does, it's true. If it doesn't, it's false. It's a really useful validation technique. You can use it for all kinds of things. And that's what re.match does. It's basically checking if the email is valid or not, depending on how we've defined a valid email address of our rejects pattern. And input is obviously what we want to check. Yeah, you might be thinking, but Max, why are we putting bool before it? That's because this won't by default return a boolean. And we want a true or a false, so then we can check if it's true or false in your program that you'll probably use this in. That's why we're converting it to a boolean. You don't have to, but you won't get what you might not get what you were looking for, as all of our other tutorials return a true a true or a false depends on if it's valid or not. So I thought I'd do this to keep it consistent with the rest. And obviously, the return statement will return a true or a false depending on where the code is called. And that's it for this tutorial. So we're going to save our code and hit play. m at g.com is a valid email address according to this rejects pattern. Again, it's simple validation. The best thing you could be doing is email verification, which is where you send an email to the email address given, and then you ask the user to click on a link or something. That's the only way you can tell if an email address exists or not. Let's try max at gmail.com, which is probably an email address that's taken, which is true. Now let's type a bunch of numbers and letters. And it's false because that's not a valid email address. Anyway, thanks for watching. Be sure to leave a like and a comment if you enjoyed, and be sure to subscribe if you want to see more Python tutorials that help you get an A in your coursework or exams. Thanks for watching.